Good everyone, I'm Chris from Sunrise. We're uh, building a specialized data availability layer for proof of liquidity, which is in the modular ecosystem, but is very well aligned with chain abstraction. And that's a topic that I'm personally passionate about. And so I think I wanted to go around and kind of just say hi to everybody, maybe introduce yourself real quick, and then let's start off by getting a quick idea about your approach or sentiment towards chain abstraction. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Karel, founder of Union. Uh, we do trust-minimized interoperability, and then especially focused on supporting a future of thousands of app chains, thousands of rollups, really where every single user no longer interacts with the underlying L1, but more with apps built on top of those. Hey guys, uh, I'm Sadat, co-founder of Skate. Uh, at Arcel, like at Arin, we sort of see ourselves as one of the enablers of chain abstraction. Like uh, what we're trying to build is basically infrastructure to have interoperability at the application level. And like the key goal that we want to achieve is basically be able to have EVM apps run in a way where basically they have a single unified state across all these like thousands of EVM chains. Uh, Brendan, I'm a product lead at Agoric. Um, what Agoric's trying to do is um, asynchronously coordinate um, assets and services across the multi-chain ecosystem. So we're looking to add to the chain abstraction toolkit with our orchestration capabilities, which should make that experience of, of building these applications uh, and smoothen the UX all around. Cool. I'm Adrian, and I work on Intense. There we go. <laughs> awesome. And so, you know, in regard to chain abstraction and user experience, I think what's what's the overlap there? How does chain abstraction directly relate to the user experience? Like at a very fundamental level, right? Um, we live in this very stupid world where everyone clones the apps between every single chain. Like when you look at Uniswap, you deploy uh, the same 15 Uniswap contracts effectively onto every single chain. Um, and now all of a sudden we live in this world where as a user I have to manually figure out how I go and interact with these 15 different systems, what the security models of them are, um, and effectively my apps don't roam. Like what you really want and what an omatologic consent does is you want an abstraction on top that is essentially an intent machine where users can describe what they want and you end up in a world where um, you as a user, you like your application roams with you. Um, and so the chain underneath is just a security model. It's an execution environment. It's like an operating system that you, like your application can like run on. Um, but you as a user only care about, well, I want to trade A for B. I want to like interact with a specific thing. And then you define the security model that you care about or the execution guarantees that you care about. Um, and then this may end up in many different execution, mo uh, execution models that you never specifically had to pick. You never had to specifically understand how to interact with it. Um, I, I think this is really where this comes down to in the end. So I've been working at DevTooling Space for a few years before, uh, now I'm leading business out of Veil, before I was leading business for the graph ecosystem, and all that is really been DevTooling. And now what we're seeing is, one, we, I think we all know, I'm a big cross-chain DJ across a bunch of different chains, a bunch of different protocols, and it sucks, right? The, the user experience sucks. For me, Mint and Burr bridging is just inefficient. And right now with 100, 200 roll-ups, it's, it's, it's already bad when there are thousands. It's, it's not how the future is going to be built. And so at Avail, <coughs> three products being built. One is the base data availability layer, which is important, but that's infrastructure. The second uses the validity proofs from um, DA for, to, for chain state verification, and then aggregates those so that you can have multiple chain state verification and get rid of the traditional mint and burn bridging for end users, because that needs to be the future, right? The internet is tens of thousands of microservices that none of us see, and we need that experience across all these different microservices, and you think of a roll-up as a microservice, and we need a way for those to connect. And, and so all of us are kind of working on it in different ways, and I think it's going to be many different layers. So Avail's kind of on the infrastructure layer. You need someone like Particle working on the account abstraction and cross-chain abstraction. So I, I love the different Legos and seeing all these people work in many different ways. And I don't think it's gonna be one company that does it. I think it's gonna be many different Legos. Uh, and I'm seeing that build out in real time. So it's really fun. Awesome, thank you. And I guess, do you guys have any other opinions? You know, I, wanna, I kinda wanna see from the other side. We also have, you know, uh, escape protocol, right? Uh, maybe give us a little 
Yeah, so I think like the, it was pretty well covered, like how it sort of expense, uh, sort of uh, like user, UX, affects the UX of the users. I'll sort of dig a bit into the other side of the picture, like the different teams who are building these apps or different L2s. Like if you consider from their perspective, uh, like right now what is happening is like say, if I have a particular app, uh, if I have to scale to another ecosystem, so I have to build, de deploy like a complete siloed implementation. So from my perspective to sort of get all the network effects, uh, the cost for me sort of scales with every deployment. Like if say, I have a particular project which has a token, I need the token to exist in another EVM L2. So I have to build another like one million, two million liquidity, give out a lot of liquidity mining incentives for that. So basically your cost sort of scales horizontally if you don't have like an front side. Similarly for an L2, like if I am building a new EVM L2, I need all these basic Legos, like I need an AMM, I need an NFT marketplace on my ecosystem. So I have to, like right now 90% of the development efforts on the EVM stack especially sort of goes in just forking these key themes that worked on Ethereum on a new L2. So that sort of like wastes a lot of efforts and it's like super inefficient. So eventually we have to move a bit from that perspective. So that's where like from our perspective what we are working on, sort of enabling like like a global unified state across all of these chains so that you can uh, reduce the cost for these apps and like the L2 developers to sort of bootstrap the ecosystem. Like, uh, I would urge everyone to really consider whether the thousands of roll-ups ecosystem is actually really, like, whether it's a made up thing that sort of this in large parts of this industry have convinced themselves is a real thing or whether this is actually going to practically happen because like when you really look at it, what is the utility in the like nth EVM rollup? Um, it does nothing new. Uh, this is sort of like we. Like, I, I think we should really deeply consider whether the like statement there will be hundreds of thousands of rollups is actually going to be true, um, because it's uh, just like structurally seems really unlikely that we need the hundred thousands deployment of the same EVM rollup into a multi, like secured by uh, like the next three out of five multisig, like in the best case, right? Um, I think what's much more likely is that uh, different users, like they think they actually care about security guarantees. And it's like you wanna have, um, like users will want to pick their specific security guarantees and they will care much more long-term about the actual security of the thing rather than like, oh, I have a new roll up here that like gives me points and so I can like do airdrop harming. Like I, I really think that the incentives that everyone currently is observes, the signals that everyone observes, have been pretty heavily skewed by this airdrop farming effectively. Because yes, it makes it, it makes it appear like there's total demand for like hundreds of thousands of rollups. Practically, all of them are dead after like six months because they fundamentally do nothing new. So like, I, um, I'd be very careful that I think we shouldn't be building for this. Um, world that we're currently seeing where, because I think the signals we're getting from the market are very heavily distorted by incredibly short-term financial incentives. So I partially agree with you. There's no need for a thousand roll-ups that all do exactly the same, provide a smart contract execution environment for app builders. But I think if you're building an app, then you have a couple of priorities. And one of those is for your end users, predictable fees, no congestion, and really be able to plan out your product roadmap entirely. And currently, to be honest, the only way to accomplish that is by moving into your own state machine. And that can be an app chain, that can be a rollup, but that provides you with that foundation to build out your own product entirely. So this future of a thousand rollups, at least when I refer to it, is not one where we have a thousand EVM clones that all spawn their Uniswap clones on top of that. That's thousands of different apps that all do their own thing, that have their focus product, their user base, and their whole entirely kind of UX tailored around that. Um, we can do this right now partially, right? Like Solana has this, Ethereum has this, uh, but we run in the congestion high gas fees. And so really chain abstraction to me is, can we provide the same experience that Solana's composability provides across this full rollup stack, right? Can we give the end user in the end the same feel that they had in early Ethereum, to be honest, when there were low gas fees and everything just composed together seamlessly while doing so with DA interop across all of these microservices? Uh, I, I agree with you as well, because imagine when we're buying a home on chain, there's gonna be all these different app specific use cases, again, microservices, one for the realtor experience, one for the contracts, one for the escrow, one to actually switch over the home, and they're probably not gonna be on a monolith the blockchain because it, it's not gonna scale, it's gonna shut down, and I don't want things to shut down 
when I'm buying a damn home. So it's, I, I think it's going to be, if like we're rebuilding the internet, truly rebuilding the internet experience, that's how the internet scaled, and I think that's how we're seeing this scale. And right now we're just, even, all these general purpose chains, I, I think we're just battle testing the tech. Because it's, the tech stacks are also nascent, um, it, it's blowing up, it's shutting down in prod, and so that's good. We're like failing, and we're failing forward. Uh, but I do see it scaling like the internet, just in the, uh, the Web3 concept for a lot of different things. Yeah, and I want to add on top of that, we always make this um, comparison to microservices, but I think crypto itself is just not regular tech. We're all in here to build very sovereign products. No one likes to build a product and rely entirely to an L1 and actually like make the original L1 token holders rich. They want to build products that benefit their community, that benefit themselves, either by having value go back in their own token or by, by providing very low transaction fees. And so I think for almost any project out there, it is a natural transition to start at a smart contract and then become more sovereign over time and not give up your MEV, but control your sequencing in some form or another, control where your data is stored, and much better resembles how, to be honest, we operate on Earth as well. Like there's different uh, jurisdictions, uh, legalities, depending on which continent you're in, and so kind of like a monolithic world just becomes very dystopian, where we cannot actually serve all users and all apps. And so modular and the thousand rollup worlds just provides us with the most creativity and flexibility. Building on top of this topic, you know, uh, seems like there's a lot of scale and a variety of applications here. Um, how does chain abstraction relate to the onboarding process of actually getting users onto these applications or use cases? For me, what I want to see is users no longer starting out by looking at an L1 and then inspecting what apps are on there. It should be exactly the opposite, right? They should get excited by an app and its features, and that should be how they're onboarded into crypto itself. Uh, get their feet wet initially, and perhaps never actually start reading up on the uh, underlying L1s. And um, that's at least, I think, what everyone complains about on Twitter as well. They want to see more app builders. They want to see people actually like address end users overall, and perhaps less underlying infrastructure that people invest in and are excited about, but then don't have any apps on that. So my thought there is um, look at something like, say, Robin Hood, right? Like how it gamified op options trading. Like I guarantee you a huge number of those new users, they didn't even, a lot of them didn't know what they were doing. Um, a lot of them lost money, right? Now, that experience was, was really, really easy and smooth. Anybody could go on to Robin Hood and trade options. It was a super smooth front end and experience. Um, like, the simpler something is, the, the more people will use it. It's as simple as that. And, you know, chain abstraction, uh, there's a bunch of solutions to chain abstraction. And the, the fewer touch points we give users, like the fewer signatures, like if, you, if, you, if they have a string of transactions and they only need to sign once, or if they have less touch points throughout an ecosystem as they try to achieve their goal, the more they're going to use it. Uh, it it's as simple as that. Like, there's a lot to be taken from what we've learned in Web2. Like, think, look at all the time they've had to optimize and, and, and perfect UX. Um, and we're still getting there with Web3. And so the push to abstract it all away is it's still growing. There's still a lot to learn. But the, the balance is how do you choose what to hide and show and, and run the risk of user ignorance. Do they know what they're doing? Do they know the security is sitting underneath it? That's the balance, right? It's like you can make it simple with one click, but do they know they're opening a collateralized debt position and they could be in trouble if they get their access liquidated? And that, that's kind of one, of one of the things we're thinking about is like how do, we, how do we simplify that experience in one click but make it as easy as possible for anyone to jump in? Hello. Um, it's got to be an intent-based system. Like, I right. want to do something. I just put out my intent and all the shit works. Like that's, that's the internet experience, and if we don't get there or better, then we've kind of lost, I think. And I don't know how long it's gonna take, but things like orchestration, just going one after the other, if you just put out an intent and it just goes across chains and it just works, like we need to get there, we need to build to that. Um, I, again, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but that's the goal we should be striving for. I think just uh, I'll add one more thing to this. I think uh, in terms of the user onboarding, how I see it is like pretty synonymous to how like say the programming languages have adapted over time. Like if you were coding an assembly language, you have to sort of give 10 different instructions for executing a particular thing. Then say if something like Python comes, it just like sort of changes it to a single statement, then you can execute all that. 
Similarly, I think right now, if you're sort of doing certain thing, like you have to buy something, then loan something, all that, you have to write, like do 10 different transactions, give approvals, do bridging assets and all that. Eventually, it will just basically change to like one particular instruction or a prompt and then it gets done. So yeah, eventually, you have to sort of go in that direction and then only you would like, like users would be accepting it. Now, uh, you touched upon agoric orchestration also intense as well. And I kind of want to see how chain abstraction affects the way a user actually interacts with these applications, right? Um, how do we build for that? I think the abstraction will look very similar that users are going to interact with the intent machine. Uh, this is sort of the old, and the intent machine is really like a part of a noma. And I think as far as I, no, I know it's the only, uh, the only current fully generalized intent machine that's fully spec'd out. This intent machine will run as an abstraction on top of many different security models. Um, and users or applications will effectively decide that they want to interact with specific applications. Um, for example, front ends, those front ends generate intents. They probably make smart choices on behalf of users with regards to like what default security models users care about. This is also affecting like local jurisdiction actually, where like if your front end detects that you're in the US, like your front end is probably going to enforce US US law as it should. Um, but if you're in Switzerland, uh, your front may enforce Swiss law, right? This is sort of the realistic thing where your local jurisdiction actually matters. Um, then you start, then the front end generates the intent. The intent just says a specific state transition. It doesn't, it only says the what, not the how. Um, solvers end up looking at this and go, okay, cool. How do I compute this? How do I, if I have A for B, B for C, C for D, is there anyone else in the world that has D for A? Is this now settleable? This may be settleable across many different chains, uh, across many different security models, across many different um, different execution models. Um, and in the end, the user just checks whether the, sort of his intent was fulfilled or not, um, and without having to care on like what actually what computation actually took place, because he was very specific in defining what assets he or like what security models he cared about. This could even mean that like I'm willing to give up ETH on mainnet Ethereum if I receive UCC on Arbitrum, right? Like this fully captures this model of that we currently have of uh, we live in a world where we have many different security models, many different execution environments, um, and users can make independent choices what they care about here. I want to ask, uh, do you guys have any opinions on maybe design principles or best practices of integrating chain extraction into the user experience? Uh, I think we should all be building stuff that's agnostic, meaning it's usable in any environment and it is not siloed in some walled garden. So making like truly agnostic tech layers that can be used in non-EVM, EVM, and so on. That's, um, I'd, I'd love to see everyone building and then like all of us put together these different Legos and figure out the stuff that makes the end UX better. Yeah, I, was, I, I would say um, like before you run off building, if you want to build something that's chain abstracted, like look at the landscape, look, look at, like people are building different solutions and you know, this abstraction stack could solve your problem in multiple ways and maybe you need to use you know, more than agoric orchestration to do what you're doing. Um, and so leverage what's already out there. Don't, you know, think about what you can bring that's already exists. Um, rather than trying to start it from scratch. But it, like I said, it's a, it's a pie that's growing. There's no single best abstraction or attempt at chain abstraction at a certain level that's gonna win. It, it, everyone's gotta work together. And that's why this, the, you know, the CAKE initiative is awesome. Like people are thinking about this in a concentrated, uh, coordinated effort and trying to think about how to attack it from both ends. Um, like I would say build interfaces, not intermediaries. Like if your answer to this problem is I will build another chain that abstracts everything, you're probably heading down the wrong road um, because now you haven't built an abstract, like you've just like introduced an extra trust into the system and you go like, well, my chain is now effectively like a US bank and it's the gatekeeper to interact with the rest of the ecosystem, right? Like build interfaces, build protocols that are generic that like where you're not interacting with a specific uh, like party or chain, you're rather interacting with a protocol like TCP IP or IBC. Like IBC is actually a great example of this. IBC is an interface, not an intermediary, and as a result, IBC gives us lots of power to build interesting things on top of IBC. If IBC was a chain, which I'm pretty sure it exists, pro like a lot of these cross-chain things are effectively like intermediaries over IBC, 
um, you didn't really solve a cross-chain asset problem. You just went like, well, route via me, and now you trust me, right? Like, so I like, really think about are you using interface or are you do using intermediary here? And like, I would always try to like stick to the interfaces as much as possible because there are much easier abstractions to build against. All right, and before we go, I want to wrap it up with this last question. We'll do a quick speed round. Maybe if you could each go by, by one and just kind of share your opinion on how chain abstraction might impact the future trends of user experience. Um, so I think if you look right now at a lot of smart contracts and applications, the application UI almost exactly resembles the smart contract. There's a swap public function when you press the swap button, and that's all kind of legacy applications. And I think what chain abstraction really is going to enable is much more efficient smart contracts, which are not intended to be directly interacted with through a UI, but instead this layer of intents and abstractions in between, um, so that we get basically the best gas cost, the most efficient batching on chain, uh, while still giving users the same UIs that they're used to. And that's probably going to be kind of the biggest change that we're actually going to see in the developer community, understanding that now like the backend is becoming very different from what the UI interacts with. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And then I, I just add like all these different chains, they're really doing it so they can create custom gas tokens, they can optimize for speed, security, or whatever they want to do. And chain abstraction, just the interop uh, cross-chain communication is either going to like kill or or make us succeed. So yeah, it's it's super important. And, and I love the experimentation on all this execution settlement stuff on these chains, off-chain compute from layer ones. Um, but we need to work on, on making sure it all like blends together for a UX. Yeah, from my end, I think uh, I have a feeling that the current way the applications are sort of being developed, they will sort of get deprecated uh, because uh, currently it's like a super inefficient model. Every app has no knowledge of what's happening. Like how I'm seeing things is that you have like very good teams who are working on the application side, like Uniswap, Blur, and then you have very good teams who are working on the interop side like XLR, Layer Zero, Union, I think it's a great product. Uh, but then at some level or other, they have to be coupled together because otherwise, like, how would you, like, you will have the same, like, scene of basically people keeping on forking themes on new ecosystems, launching a token, make money, exit, then doing the same thing on a new EVM chain and all. So that, that's something that I feel has to change and that, that will sort of lead to a completely new kind of applications. Like, there's a lot of investment also going on all these, like, co-processors which can sort of outsource a lot of computation and that can enable like new front ends of the applications that could be developed. So eventually I'm sort of thinking like we will move in that kind of model where it could be that one app could be a coprocessor to another app on another chain or there could be like some off-chain off component to it. So there would be a completely new stream of applications and they would be so more powerful that uh, the current stream of applications will have to adapt or like the current forms will just deprecate. Yeah, so I think the it'll be very clear when chain abstraction wins, right? Like, I think it's going to be really clear when we've hit a, a milestone uh, because there will be a watershed moment of a bunch of new users coming in. Like, the, the barrier entry will be super low. You'll only need one wallet or you'll only need one account or, you, you, you know, you're, we've abstracted away so much of the complexity of the underlying that um, it's just coming into a Web3 and experiencing the benefits, like you can't use the excuse of it's overwhelming, it's confusing. Um, you know, the future is, is, uh, is multi-chain and, and I, think, I think it's just, it's hard to ignore that you need to think about how to abstract the complex when you're building and you can draw a line between that and, and the success and the number of users and, and the volume of transactions that your protocol or app will get. Um, much higher, uh, ease of development for developers because building applications is like an order of magnitude easier if you start thinking from intents as, as the base layer. Um, and at the same time, much higher guarantees for safety for your actual users because it's very easy to understand like the state changes you're signing over. Like I currently have A and I'm, I'm willing to take B. It is very complicated to understand the actual computational traces that you're signing over, which is really the model we're doing at the moment. So. Yeah, I, I think like the DevX is going to go up by an order of magnitude and the safety will finally come to a point where it's like my parents will be able to look at it and go, okay, I kind of understand what's happening here. Whereas if you show them a bunch of EVM upcodes, they don't. Awesome, I think we're out of time. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me.